Hola amigos, and welcome back for another exciting week of Español. I hope you're all doing well this week. Um, this chapter is titled Unidad Uno, Lección Uno, so Unit 1, Lesson 1, and our title is ¿Qué te gusta hacer? What do you like to do? ¿Qué te gusta hacer? I told you that um, every chapter in our text takes place in a different book, uh, or every, sorry, every chapter in our text takes place in a different country, and in this chapter we are talking about los Estados Unidos, the United States. So, in this chapter, you will learn how to identify subject pronouns, both in English and in Spanish, how to recall vocabulary related to daily activities, things that you do every day, practice sports, watch Netflix, so on and so forth, um, how to create sentences in Spanish using the verb ser, which means to be, how to express one's origin, where you're from, and how to create sentences in Spanish expressing likes and dislikes using the verb gustar. So as we get started, you see a photo here um, with a conversation going on. And if we were in class, we'd be listening to someone else read this, but uh, I'm going to read it to you here. Uh, you can see this guy on the phone, or this woman on the phone, and she says, Hola, me llamo Teresa. Hello, my name is Teresa. Uh, después de las clases, me gusta pasar un rato con los amigos. Me gusta escuchar música o tocar la guitarra. And all of these uh, phrases here are, uh, there's pictures of all these words around, and you have their names. So you see Miguel here in the green shirt with the phone up to his face, and it looks like he likes to hablar por teléfono, talk on the phone. You can see Teresa here, uh, and it looks like she is going to escuchar música, to listen to music. Alicia is going to leer un libro, to read a book, leer un libro. Up here, we have someone else who likes to tocar la guitarra, to play the guitar. And this person likes to dibujar, to draw, dibujar. So say these words with me. Hablar por teléfono. Yeah, hablar por teléfono, to talk on the phone. Escuchar música. Mm -hmm. Escuchar música, to listen to music. Leer un libro. Mm -hmm. Leer un libro, to read a book. Tocar la guitarra, to play the guitar, tocar la guitarra, and dibujar, dibujar, to draw. Okay, so in this, in this little passage, we see, hello, hola, me llamo Teresa, my name is Teresa, después de las clases, after classes, me gusta, I like to pasar un rato con los amigos, I like to pass a while with friends, I like to hang out with my friends. She says, me gusta escuchar música o tocar la guitarra. I like to listen to music or play the guitar, as you can see her doing in both of these photos here. All right, as we keep going, uh, now Miguel, the guy from the green shirt before, is now talking, and he says, Hola, me llamo Miguel. Hello, my name is Miguel. A mí me gusta hablar por teléfono. I like to talk on the phone. I like to dibujar y estudiar. So you look back here, he likes to hablar por teléfono, he likes to talk on the phone, he likes to dibujar, he likes to draw. It also says, a mí me gusta hablar por teléfono, dibujar y estudiar. He likes to estudiar, and you can see in the picture, estudiar is to study. He continues that me gusta pasear, see the picture here, pasear is to walk. Me gusta pasear, I like to walk, but he says, pero me gusta más, Correr. So he likes to walk, but me gusta más, just like Taco Bell is más, live more. Um, he likes to walk, but he likes running. Me gusta correr más. He likes to run more. You can see here in the photo, correr, to run. Uh, this word pero, P-E-R-O, means but. So me gusta pasear, I like to walk, but pero me gusta más correr. I'd rather run. I like to run more. And he asks, a ti, que te gusta hacer? And you, what do you like to do? A ti, que te gusta hacer? As we keep looking here in letter C, this time Alicia is talking and she says, Hola, me llamo Alicia. A mí me gusta montar en bicicleta y jugar al fútbol. She says, I like to montar en bicicleta. And you can see a photo here. Montar en bicicleta is to ride a bike. She also likes to jugar al fútbol, to play soccer, and you can see her doing that here on the beach. So I like to um, 
ride bikes and play soccer. She says tambien, which means also. Me gusta andar en patineta. She also likes to skateboard. Andar en patineta. Scary. Okay. Uh, and finally here in letter D, uh, you see some, some food words here. Food is my favorite thing to learn about in Spanish. Uh, you can see she says, hoy hace calor en Miami. Oh man, today, hoy hace calor en Miami. It is hot in Miami. Antes de practicar deportes, me gusta comprar agua. So antes de practicar deportes, before, antes de practicar deportes, before practicing sports, me gusta comprar agua. You can see here, agua is water. And comprar, as you can tell from the photo, it looks like he's handing some money to this gentleman. And the gentleman's handing him back two waters. So comprar is to buy. So today it's hot in Miami. Before practicing sports, I like to buy water. And you can see some other foods here in the pictures. You see la pizza. I'm sure you'll never guess what that one is. La pizza. You see el refresco, a soft drink. El refresco, a soft drink or a soda. Las papas fritas, French fries. Literally, papas are potatoes, and fritas are fried. So, fried potatoes, French fries. Las papas fritas. You see la fruta, some fruit here. We have la banana, la manzana, el limón, la naranja, la piña, so on and so forth. La fruta. Down here, las galletas, cookies, las galletas, and el helado, ice cream, el helado. As you keep going here in letter E, you see the family here, they're talking and uh, someone's speaking and they say, me gusta beber agua o jugo, pero no me gusta beber refrescos. So this person says, me gusta, I like, to beber, to drink agua, I like to drink water, o jugo, I like to drink water, o, or jugo, juice. And you can see some juice laying here on the counter. So I like to drink water or juice, pero, which we said earlier means but. I like to drink water or juice, but no me gusta. I do not like to beber refrescos. Do not like to drink soft drinks. You can see her uh, in this picture here. She likes to beber. She's drinking. Um, so be very careful here. Um, me gusta. I like. No me gusta. I don't like. Other things you see in the photo, it looks like the father here. Uh, is going to preparar la comida. He's preparing the food. Preparar la comida. And uh, Miguel here likes to comer. He's eating. Comer. All right, as we keep moving, you see some other daily activities here. Um, they, this person says, No me gusta, I do not like, no me gusta, trabajar los sábados y domingos. Well, you know that sábados and domingos are... Yeah, Saturdays and Sundays, or we might say the weekend. So, I do not like to work on the weekends. Trabajar is to work. Um, me gusta escribir correos electrónicos y descansar. So, I don't like to work on Saturdays and Sundays, but I do like to escribir correos electrónicos. I like to write emails. Um, and you can see that here. She's writing an email. Escribir correos electrónicos. She also likes to descansar. To relax or rest. We might also say to chill. Okay. She specifies that también me gusta mirar la televisión. Also, también, I like to mirar la televisión. I like to watch TV. Or we might say mirar Netflix or mirar Hulu. Mirar Disney+. Plus. Um, and she continues to ask, well, ¿te gusta pasar un rato con los amigos? Uh, do you like to spend time with your friends? ¿Te gusta pasar un rato con los amigos? And then finally, just some general other words that are included in this chapter that you need to know. The word actividad is an activity. Alquilar un DVD, to rent a DVD. Aprender el español, to learn Spanish. La escuela, the school. And hacer la tarea, to do homework. Okay, again, you should be making flashcards for all of these bolded words you see in blue. You can make sure you study those. And you do have the quizlets that I made for you as well. All right, so we're going to let you practice a little bit with some of what you're learning. Um, in this case, you're going to escucha a la lista de actividades, listen to the list of activities, 
And mientras escuchas, representa las actividades. So as you're listening, act out the activities that you hear. All right, so let's listen. Unidad 1, lección 1. Presentación de vocabulario. A responder. Listen to the list of activities. As you listen, act out the activities. 1. Beber. Beber. All right, so beber means to drink. So I have a coffee cup here in front of me and I'm turning up to drink. Beber. All right, so you should uh, be acting that out as well. 2. Descansar. Descansar. What's descansar mean again? Yeah, descansar is to rest, relax, or chill. So you might throw your feet up there, look like you're chilling. Tres. Hablar por teléfono. Hablar por teléfono. Hablar por teléfono. What's that mean? Yeah, to talk on the phones. You might be holding your phone up to your ear. Hablar por teléfono. Cuatro. Comer. Comer. Yeah, comer is to eat. Cinco. So you should be uh, pretending like you're eating. Comer. Tocar la guitarra. Tocar la guitarra. Yeah, so you're jamming out there with your guitar. Tocar la guitarra. Seis. Leer un libro. Leer un libro. Yeah, leer un libro is to read a book. Yeah, so grab a book out. Look like you're reading. Leer un libro. Siete. Jugar al fútbol. Jugar al fútbol. Oh, careful. Jugar al fútbol is to play soccer. Fútbol is soccer. If you want to talk about like football, like we have American football here, we would say jugar al fútbol americano. We add the word americano afterward. Okay, those are some activities. Um, so this next little vocabulary practice we're going to do, and remember our learning objective is to identify vocabulary related to daily activities, snack foods, and likes and dislikes. Uh, you see here this activity is called El Sábado, and this is a little reading activity. It tells you that Miguel, Teresa, y Alicia hablan de las actividades que les gusta hacer. Completa la conversación con las palabras apropiadas. So Michael, Teresa, and Alicia talk about the activities that they like to do. You're supposed to complete the conversation with the appropriate words. And you can see the pink words over here are a little word bank that you're going to choose from to fill these in. So let's do these together. Um, Alicia says, Miguel, ¿te gusta escuchar blank los sábados? Michael, do you like to listen to blank on Saturdays? And your options here from the pink are un libro, a book, un DVD, a DVD, bicicleta, a bicycle, deportes, sports, la comida, food, música, music, or la tarea, homework. So Michael, do you like to listen to Blink on Saturdays? It makes the most sense here to use música. Do you like to listen to music on Saturdays? Música. So for number one, we're going to put música. Okay, number two, uh, Michael responds and he says, Sí, yes, pero me gusta más practicar blank. So yeah, I like to listen to music, but I would rather listen, or, sorry, I would rather practice, yeah, I like to listen to music, but I'd rather practice sports, practicar deportes. Okay, I want you to pause your audio and give numbers three through seven a try for us, okay? All right, now you've had a second to try these. Number three. Uh, Teresa, te gusta montar in blank. So, Teresa, do you like to ride? Yeah, the, the one that makes the most sense here would be, the most sense would be, do you like to ride bikes? Te gusta montar in bicicleta. Bicicleta. Number four, Teresa responds and she says, no, no me gusta. I do not like to ride bikes. Me gusta más leer blank. I would rather read, yeah, leer un libro. Read a book. Alicia continues and she says, Teresa, ¿te gusta hacer blank los sábados? Do you like to do blank on Saturdays? And she's asking, do you like to do homework, hacer la tarea los sábados? And Teresa responds and she says, los sábados, Saturdays? No, solo me gusta preparar blank, alquilar blank y descansar. Saturdays? No, I don't like to do homework. I only like to prepare blank 
rent a blank and relax. So she likes to prepare, preparar la comida, prepare the food, alquilar un DVD, rent a DVD, y descansar, and rest, or chill and relax. Okay, so I've written these answers out for you here. So hopefully you are feeling pretty good about your vocab practice. Um, so we're going to expand a little bit here. I, we're going to take this objective to identify vocabulary related to daily activities, snack foods, and likes and dislikes. And we're going to add a second objective to that, and that is to create sentences expressing what foods, uh, snack foods, you like and dislike. So the title of this activity is Te Gusta, Do You Like? And it's always going to give you the verb. So the modelo gives you the verb beber, to drink. And it gives you a picture of something. This here is a soft drink, El Refresco. This is the Jarritos brand of soft drink, which are really good. If you haven't tried those, they're like Hispanic sodas, and they're very good. So uh, modelo, so to drink soft drinks. So you have to decide, do you like to drink soft drinks or do you not? Personally, I don't drink a lot of soft drinks. So I'm going to say, no me gusta, I do not like. I'm going to use the verb it gives me, beber, and then I'm going to say within the picture, refrescos, soft drinks. So my sentence is, no me gusta beber refrescos. Now, if you're the kind of person you love soda and you drink soft drinks, you're going to say, me gusta beber refrescos. I like to drink soft drinks. Okay, let's do another one together here. In number one, you see a photo of some cookies, and it gives you the verb comer. Now, I like to eat cookies, so I'm going to say I like, me gusta, to eat, comer, and then the picture here are cookies, las galletas, okay? I want you to take a moment, and I want you to write your own sentences that describe how you feel about the items in numbers two through six. So pause your audio, and you can click play when you're ready. Okay, in number two, you're given the verb beber, to drink, and then you're given a glass of orange juice. So if you like orange juice, you're going to say, me gusta, Beber el jugo. I like to drink juice. If you don't like to drink orange juice, you're going to say, No me gusta beber el jugo. Number three shows some ice cream there. I do like to eat ice cream. I make Sonic runs just about every night, I feel like. So I'm going to say, Me gusta comer el helado. I like to drink, I like to eat ice cream. Me gusta comer. El helado. Now, some people don't like ice cream. Maybe you're lactose intolerant, or maybe you're just weird and don't like ice cream. You're going to say, no me gusta comer el helado, if you don't like it. All right, number four. You see some French fries there. Uh, I like to eat French fries, so I'm going to say, me gusta comer las papas fritas. If you don't like French fries, no me gusta comer las papas fritas. Number five. It gives us the verb beber. And we're given some agua, some water. So I'm going to say, me gusta beber el agua. I like to drink water. Some people just don't like water. They just can't drink plain water. They say, no me gusta beber el agua. And number six, to eat fruit. Um, oops, to eat fruit. Me gusta comer la fruta. I like to eat fruit. Or if you don't like fruit, no me gusta comer la fruta. All right, so hopefully you're feeling pretty good about creating these sentences in Spanish. Um... The next thing that I want to talk to you about here, uh, our new learning objective, is to identify subject pronouns both in English and in Spanish, and then to create sentences using the verb ser, which means to be, to explain where someone is from. So I want to talk to you for a second about these subject pronouns. We have these in English, and a lot of people, um, we use them, we just don't think about them, right? So the left side of this little box here, this is the singular side, talking about one person. The right side of our box here is the plural side, talking about more than one person, okay? So for example, you have I, just one person, and then you have the plural form of I, which is we. In Spanish, we have we masculine, referring to a group of like two guys, or maybe a mixed group, one guy and one girl. Um, and then you have we feminine, a group of multiple females, so two girls, three girls, okay? Um, you have you, the informal version, which you already know in Spanish is tú. And then you have you formal. You also have the plural version of that. So the plural version of you is you all. Or if you're in the South, we say y'all. Uh, there's a certain pronoun we only use in Spain. And there's one we use in all other countries to say you all. And I'll tell you more about those in a second. And then we have he and she. 
and they in the masculine and feminine forms. So these are your subject pronouns in English. I, you, he, she, we, they, and you all. These are your subject pronouns in English. Now, let's translate those subject pronouns to Spanish. So in Spanish, I is yo. You already know that you informal is tu. We have he, él, she, ella, and you formal, usted. Okay, for we, we have nosotros and nosotras. Nosotros with the OS is referring to we masculine. So that could be a group of all men. So Matthew, John, and I, all men. Or you can have a group of men and women together. So um, Matthew, John, Taryn, and I. Okay? Nosotras is we feminine. So it's a group of all women saying so and so and I. Um, the vosotros form, in this case, is used only in Spain and it means you all or y'all. Again, vosotros is masculine or a mixed group and vosotras is all feminine. Um, we have ustedes, which is the other form of you all, used everywhere other than Spain, so any other country other than Spain. And then you have ellos and ellas that both mean they. Again, ellos is they masculine, so Matthew and John would be they. And then they feminine, you have um, Tanya and Lizzie. Tanya and Lizzie would be they, ellas. Okay, so these are your subject pronouns. Yo, tú, él, ella, usted, nosotros, nosotras, vosotros, vosotras, and ellos, ellas, ustedes. Guys, this is the framework for Spanish. You have to know these subject pronouns. This is literally the most important thing you will learn this semester. It unlocks everything else that we will do in our class together. So please, please, please make sure you memorize these thoroughly and have a very good understanding of them. If you memorize these, the rest of your semester is going to be very easy, okay? Now, let's practice with these a little bit. So number one, which subject pronoun above in teal, which one of these subject pronouns would I use to replace Sherry? Well, you have to ask yourself, would Sherry be I, you, he, she, you formal, we, they, or you all? Well, Sherry would be she, so I'm going to use the teal subject pronoun ella to replace Sherry. What about Matthew? Well, Matthew would be he, so I'm going to use the teal subject pronoun el to replace Matthew. What if I said Sherry and I? Well, this one depends. If you are a male and you're speaking, and you said Sherry and I, you have to think about it. Would that be I, you, he, she, we, they, or you all? Sherry and I would be we. So if you're a male speaking and you say we, you're going to say nosotros, because there's at least one male, Sherry and you. If you're a female speaking and you say Sherry and I, you're going to say nosotras because you're both females. Sherry is a female and you are a female. Nosotras. Um, and then finally, which subject pronoun would I use to replace Matthew and Sherry? So again, ask yourself the question, would Matthew and Sherry be I, you, he, she, we, they, or you all? Matthew and Sherry would be they. Um, and there's one male, Matthew, and one female. So we're automatically going to default to the masculine form. We're going to use ellos. All right, hopefully you're feeling pretty good about those subject pronouns. I want you to practice with these just a smidge more. Um, again, going along with our activity to identify subject pronouns in English and Spanish, you see a photo here of this woman in, in yellow, and she's pointing to this girl in red, and she's trying to say she. So she's going to use the Spanish subject pronoun ella, ella. Okay, now I want you to pause your audio and I want you to give these a try in numbers one through six. Okay, now there's about a second to try these. In number one, you can see the same woman and she's pointing to these two folks over here. She's pointing to them. So we're trying to say they in this case. There's one male, so we're automatically going to default to the masculine plural form. We're going to say ellos, ellos. Okay, and number two, it looks like they're having a conversation. This time, instead of saying she, she's probably saying you. Well, and they look to be about the same age. They're friendly, so she's probably going to use you informal. She's going to say tu. Number three, she's pointing to herself. She's trying to say I. 
You know that I in Spanish is yo. Number three, we should have yo. Number four, uh, she, she's having a conversation with this guy too. It looks like they're talking. So she's trying to say you, but here, this guy's dressed up. He's holding a book. Maybe he's her teacher. She's probably going to be a little more formal. So instead of you informal, she's going to use you formal. She should say usted. Usted. Number five, she's got her arms wrapped around these girls. She's like, ladies, we are awesome. So she's saying we. Uh, she's going to use we feminine because they're all female. And she's going to say nosotras. Okay. And then over here, uh, she's talking about these two girls that are behind her. And she's talking about them saying they. Um, they're both female in this case. So we should use they feminine. She's going to say a yes. All right. Hopefully you feel good about those subject pronouns. The reason that I've said these are so important is because we have to take these subject pronouns and we have to add verbs to them. Okay, so for example, uh, our learning objective is to create sentences using the verb ser, which means to be, in order to talk about your origin. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't go up and say, yo ser, I to be, tu ser, you to be. El, ella, usted, ser, he or she to be, right? We have to conjugate that verb, which is where we change it. So instead of saying I to be, you to be, he to be, we want to say I am, you are, he or she is. That process of changing from the infinitive, from ser, to be, to am, is, are, that's called conjugating. When we conjugate the verb ser, you can see I've done these in green for you. So I told you this box was important. We took these subject pronouns and we added the verb ser. So to say I am, we say yo soy. You are, tu eres. He or she is, él, ella, usted, es. Nosotros somos, vosotros sois, and ellos, ellas, ustedes son. I want you to say these with me. Soy, eres, es, somos, sois, son. These are your ser conjugations, okay? So uh, we use these, as I said, to talk about origin. When you add the word de, D-E, after ser, de means from. So we're going to take a subject pronoun in blue, a ser word, and a de, to explain where someone's from. For example, I could say, yo soy de Buenos Aires. I'm from Buenos Aires. I am from, uh, that's the capital city of Argentina. So yo soy de Buenos Aires. I am from, yo soy de. Yo I soy am, de from, yo soy de. Or, ellas son de Venezuela. Ellas, they feminine, son, are, and de, from. Venezuela. So ellas son de Venezuela. They're from Venezuela. So take note, uh, this you use de when you're trying to talk about where someone is from. Now, I could use it without de. I could just say yo soy Matthew. I am Matthew. I don't need a de in there because I'm not saying I'm from Matthew. I'm just saying I'm Matthew. Yo soy Matthew. Same thing down here. Um, you add a de when you're trying to talk about where someone is from. Daniela y Sonia son de Miami. Daniela y Sonia, we knew would be they, talking about two people. We went back up to our box. We found our they box, uh, ellos in this case. And their say word that went with ellos was son. So we said Daniela y Sonia son de Miami. In this one, we have Martin. We're trying to say that Martin is from Honduras. So Martin, you have to ask yourself, would Martin be I, you, he, she, we, or they? We know that Martin would be he. So we're going to take our subject pronoun el, and you can see the ser word that goes with el should be es. Martin es de Honduras. He is from Honduras. Okay, I know these are kind of hard. I want to give you a second to practice a little bit. Uh, here in Actividad Siete, we're asking de donde son? Where are you all from? De donde son? Um, and it tells you that los amigos y maestros de Lucía son de diferentes lugares. Escribe la forma correcta de ser para saber de dónde son. So, um, all of Lucia's friends and teachers are all from different places, and you're supposed to be using the verb ser to talk about where they're from. Now, I gave you a little cheat up here, if you need it, to help you. You can see those ser conjugations up there with your subject pronouns. Let's do a couple together. We see, hola, 
Me llamo Lucia. Hello, my name is Lucia. Mi amigo Andres y yo, my friend Andres and I, my friend Andrew and I, are from La República Dominicana. So let's ask ourselves, my friend Andrew and I. So Andrew and I, would that be I, you, he, she, we, they, or you all? Well, Andrew and I would be we. There's at least one male, Andrew, so we're going to use the we masculine version, nosotros. And our ser word to go with nosotros in this case should be somos. So we're going to take somos and fill in the blank down here. Okay, look at the next one. It says yo blank de Santo Domingo. So we're both from the Dominican Republic. I am from Santo Domingo. So yo, we need to find the ser word that goes with yo. If you look up here at your chart, you can see soy is the ser word to go with yo. And we're going to say yo soy de Santo Domingo. As we keep moving, we're saying that él, that he, is from San Pedro de Macorís. So he is from, the ser word to go with él, or he in this case, would be es. We're going to fill in these blanks. Somos, soy, and es. I want you to take a moment and finish the rest of the paragraph telling me where these people are from. Go ahead and pause your audio, and when you're ready, you can replay to give these a try. Okay, now that you've had a second to try, uh, we see la señora Muñoz y el señor Vasquez. So Mrs. Muñoz and Mr. Vasquez are from Puerto Rico, and they're my favorite teachers. Son mis maestros favoritos. So we need to think about this. Um, Mr. Muñoz, sorry, Mrs. Muñoz and Mr. Vasquez. Would Mrs. Muñoz and Mr. Vasquez be I, you, he, she, we, or they? Well, Mrs. Muñoz and Mr. Vasquez would be they. There's at least one male, so we need to use the they masculine version of ellos. And our say word to go here should be son. Son. Okay, keep going. Mis amigas Laura y Ana, blank de Colombia. My friends Laura and Ana are from Colombia. So my friends Laura and Ana. Laura and Ana be I, you, he, she, we, they, or you all. We know that Lara and Ana would be they, specifically they feminine, because we have two females, so we're going to use ellas. And the ser word to go with ellas again would be son. So son de Colombia. It says that Laura, blank de Bogota, y Ana, blank de Cartagena. So Laura is from Bogota. So Laura, would Laura be I, you, he, she, we, they, or you all? Laura would be she, so we're going to use the pronoun ella for she, and the said word in this case should be es. Laura es de Bogota. And then we're asking about Ana. We say that Ana, like de Cartagena, again, Ana would be she. So we're using ella, and our said word to go with she would be es. And our final question here, y tú, de donde blank? So, and you, where are you from? We know that the said word to go with tú, in this case, is eres. So, ¿y tú de dónde eres? And you, where are you from? Okay, I want to give you a little more practice here um, in writing these out. And you're going to have some sentences like this um, on your homework via Google Forms and on your quizzes and your exams. So, it's very important you know how to do this. Um, again, keep in mind our learning objective. You're showing you can create sentences using the verb ser to discuss one's origin. Here in Activity 8, titled... Los Amigos de Alicia, um, we're given some people. Uh, so to the left of the forward slash, you're going to see the people's names. In this case, you have Maribel y Enrique. And it tells us they're from España. They're from Spain. So we need to write our sentence that says Maribel y Enrique are from Spain. So you kind of have to fill in that part. We already have the Maribel y Enrique. We already have the España. We have to get this middle part here. So again, we're going to ask ourselves, would Maribel and Enrique be I, you, he, she, we, they, or you all? Well, Maribel and Enrique would be they. We know that our said word to go with they, in this case, uh, ellos, they masculine, our said word would be son. So we're going to say Maribel y Enrique son. And then you need to add de to say they are from. If we did not have the de there, if we just said Maribel y Enrique son España, well, Maribel and Enrique are Spain. That doesn't make sense. We want to say they're from Spain. Son de España. Okay. 
Uh, let's look at another one. Here in number one, you see yo, and then you see Miami. I'm trying to say I am from Miami. So I have yo. Uh, my ser word to go with yo from before is soy. And my sentence should be yo soy de Miami. I'm from Miami. Okay, let's do one more. Here in number two, you see Claudia and Pablo, and it gives you Mexico. We want to say that Claudia and Pablo are from Mexico. So ask yourself the question, would Claudia and Pablo be I, you, he, she, we, they, or you all? Well, Claudia and Pablo would be they. Uh, we know that the they word, in this case, is ellos. And the said word that corresponds with they or ellos is son. So we should say, Claudia y Pablo son de Mexico. You can fill it in there. Okay, I want you to take a moment and pause your audio, and I want you to give numbers three through six a try for me, please. When you're ready, you can unpause. All right, now that you've got a second to try these, as we take a look at number three, it says Marisol in Puerto Rico. Now, to say that Marisol is from Puerto Rico, we know that Marisol would be she, ella, and the said word to go with she or ella is es. So our final sentence, Marisol es de Puerto Rico. She's from Puerto Rico. Number four says Papa y yo. So dad and I, and it says Miami. So dad and I are from Miami. To say that we are from Papa y yo, our uh, word for we in Spanish is nosotros. And then the said word to go with nosotros should be somos. So Papa y yo somos de Miami. Okay. Same thing here in the others. Number five is talking about Fernando, which would be he. El, the said word to go with he or el is es, so we're going to say Fernando es de Ecuador. Same thing with number six, Mario would be he or el, our said word to go with Mario would be es, and we're going to say that Mario es de la República Dominicana, from the Dominican Republic. Okay, hopefully you are feeling better about um, these said expressions and how to form these sentences describing where someone is from. Next, we're going to move on to talk about how to explain likes and dislikes. So our learning objective is changing. We're still identifying vocabulary related to daily activities, but now we're also creating sentences using the verb gustar to say what someone likes. And this verb can be a little tricky sometimes, okay? So gustar, in this case, means literally to like or to be pleasing to. So, um... I want you to translate it more as to be pleasing to in this case, because it's going to help you make more sense of these sentences. Um, a lot of times, and specifically here in this first chapter, you're learning how to use gustar with an infinitive. And you're probably wondering, what the heck is an infinitive? Well, an infinitive is a word that ends in AR, ER, or IR in Spanish, and it's always translated as to and something else. You have a bunch of these in this chapter. Beber was to drink. Comer was to eat. Hablar was to talk. So on and so forth. So you have a lot of these. We typically use gustar with a various form of an infinitive. So in this case, to say I like, you learned me gusta. I like, or literally, to or for me, it is pleasing to draw. Me gusta dibujar. To or for me, it is pleasing to draw. Te gusta, you like. To or for you, it is pleasing to draw. He or she, or you formal like, le gusta dibujar. We like, nos gusta dibujar. You all in Spain like, os gusta dibujar. And they, or you all anywhere other than Spain like, les gusta dibujar. So you can organize these gustar expressions into the subject pronoun chart that we've been working with earlier. Um, so a mi me gusta, I like. A ti te gusta, you like. A él, ella, usted le gusta, he or she likes. A nosotros nos gusta, we like. A vosotros os gusta, you all like. And a ellos, ellas, ustedes les gusta, 
you all or they like. So notice here, the gusta part isn't changing because right now in your Spanish learning experience, you're only using this with an infinitive, okay? So you're all, it's always going to be followed by a verb that ends in A-R-E-R-I-R. -R -R. Me gusta comer, me gusta hablar, me gusta mirar Netflix, so on and so forth. Um, what's changing here is what we call the indirect object pronoun, the thing that comes before gusta. Me, te, le, nos, os, or les. That's what's telling who does the liking. Okay? Um, and in a lot of cases, you are going to show um, emphasis by placing the a in front of it. A means to. So literally, that's why I told you earlier to translate it as to be pleasing to instead of to like. So you have a mi me gusta. To or for me, it is pleasing. To or for you, it is pleasing. To or for him or her, it is pleasing. It is grammatically correct to place the a uh in front of your subject. So basically all of these, if you want to think about math, you're going to have an a uh as your formula. You're going to have a. Uh. You're going to have your subject, me, ti, en, ella, usted, etc. You're going to have an indirect object pronoun, me, te, le, no, sos, or les, gusta, and then an infinitive. Let's look at some examples. Here in activity 13, you see the title is Les Gusta o No? Do you all like this or not? And uh, it tells you to escribe lo que a estas personas les gusta o no les gusta hacer. So write what these people like or do not like to do. The modelo starts with Luisa and it says a Luisa preparar la comida. So preparar la comida was to prepare the food, and you can see Luisa has a frowny face. She must not like to cook. She does not like to prepare food. Sounds like me. So we have a Luisa, and we're going to say she doesn't like. No le gusta preparar la comida. Notice, we went back to our chart, and we asked ourselves the question. We said, well, it's Luisa, I, you, he, she, we, they, or you all. And we said, oh, 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 Luisa would be she, ella. So we found le gusta there. Okay, so our final sentence, a Luisa no le gusta preparar la comida. As I said before, if you want to think about this as a formula, you're always going to have a, you're going to have a subject, your verb, and then the rest of your sentence, an infinitive. Let's do another one together. In this sentence, you have a nosotros comer pizza and a smiley face. Hey, who doesn't like to eat pizza, right? So we like to eat pizza. A nosotros nos gusta comer la pizza. We like to eat pizza. A nosotros nos gusta comer la pizza. We ask ourselves, what gustar word goes with a nosotros? So we went back to our chart and found a nosotros and saw it was nos gusta. So we filled in the blank there. Oop. A nosotros nos gusta comer la pizza. Okay, I have a series here of others that I'd like for you to try, numbers two through six. Just practice writing these complete sentences for me. Uh, if you would, go ahead and pause your audio and give the rest of these a try. Okay, now that you've had a second to try these, let's take a look. We have a ustedes en estudiar. So you all into study, and there's a frowny face there. We're saying you all do not like to study. Uh, so we went up here to our chart. We found ustedes, and we said that the gustar word to go with ustedes would be les gusta. So we've written our final sentence, a ustedes no les gusta estudiar. You all do not like to study. Uh, next here in number three, we've taken a ti, you, and montar en bicicleta. We were given a frowny face. So you all, you do not like to ride a bike. A ti, we went up here to our chart. We found a ti. We saw that te gusta was the gustar word that went with it. And we said a ti, no te gusta montar en bicicleta. You do not like to ride a bike. Same thing with the others. A Alicia y Miguel. Aprender el español, we have a smiley face. We're saying that Alicia and Miguel like to learn Spanish. So we have to ask ourselves, would Alicia and Miguel be I, you, he, she, we, they, or you all? Alicia and Miguel would be they. So we're going to use the bottom right box here, les gusta, to say that a Alicia y Miguel les gusta aprender el español. Number five, it says a mí. We know that the gustar word to go with a mí would be me gusta. So we're going to say a mí me gusta escuchar música. And our final question, a usted en trabajar, do you formal like to work? It has a frowny face next to trabajar. We're trying to say that you formal do not like to work. So a usted 
Are gustar where to go with usted is le gusta. We're going to say a usted. No le gusta trabajar. You do not like to work. Okay. And um, guys, this wraps up our summary of Unit 1, Lesson 1. In this chapter, you've learned how to identify subject pronouns, both in English and Spanish. You've learned how to recall vocabulary related to daily activities. You've learned how to create sentences using the verb ser in order to express one's origin. And finally, you've learned how to create sentences expressing likes and dislikes using the verb gustar. Thank you all very much for taking the time to listen to this video. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Have a great day. Take care.